The top three rivalries of every MLB team, if applicable. Let's get it. So as expected, it's the Yankees and the Red Sox at the top and then the Rays. And so the Orioles are the least, but they still are in double digits, which is usually the mark of a rivalry, or at least when a fan base considers a team a rivalry. And the Rangers because of their past matchups. But very clearly the Yankees and Red Sox were going to be at the top of this. I mean, they always were. And as expected, same deal with the Orioles, Yankees, and Red Sox at the top. The Blue Jays are third. Yeah, the Rays aren't even in the cut. It's the Nationals a little bit more. I think it's like the Battle of Betway or something, uh, similar to like Twins Brewers and obviously the more famous ones like Cubs and White Sox, but also like Reds and in in Guardians. Yankees and Red Sox. I think in the past the Red Sox have actually been higher than the Yankees for the Rays before on this site. So it's interesting to see it's kind of different, especially since they've had more battles with the Red Sox than the Yankees. Although they did play the Yankees in the postseason recently, and they actually did lose to the Red Sox. Well, they lost to the Red Sox recently too. Hmm. And it's interesting that the Marlins aren't even on here, but I guess the Citrus series is kind of different. And... Who would have saw this coming? And it's funny to me, because I would have thought the Rays would be a little bit higher, but obviously the Yankees are number one. That's a given. <laughs> and as expected again. And uh, since nobody likes the Yankees, there are all these teams that have faced them in the postseason that deem the Yankees their rivals. It's more so which team is their least favorite. They have gone back and forth with the Guardians somewhat, and they did play the Mariners, and they've beaten the Twins regularly. But the Astros have a little bit of something on them, and then the Mets, yeah, because there's that Subway series, and that's to be expected. And so since we were talking about the Mets, we are making our way to the NL East now. So the Braves, top three are the Mets, Phillies, and Nationals. We have the Nats as the biggest rivalry. That's where it was actually last time. The scores are a little bit lower compared to when I looked at this five years ago. And obviously, yeah, the Mets, Mets, Braves, I mean, they've had battles before. So the Marlins are kind of just there because they haven't really done much consistently. And speaking of the Marlins, it seems like they don't really have any rivalries, and I'm actually kind of surprised the Rays didn't make the cut, but I guess they have their own division to worry about, more so than a team that doesn't play in the same league as them. And so the Braves and the Mets are their least favorite teams, with the Phillies and the Nats following suit after. And yep, the Phillies at number one, that makes sense. And then the Braves and the Yankees. I actually saw a Mets fan comment that like the Nationals are more of a snake in the garden than the Braves. Given the history that the Mets and the Braves have and the older Mets fans, they would probably have the Braves as their main rival right after the Phillies. And then yeah, obviously the New York and Philly rivalry and then the Subway series and then the Nationals. Well, the Nationals is a bigger rivalry since it's more reverse rivalry points. Kind of expected based on the information we saw already. And then the Phillies and then the Mets. So the Phillies are higher than the Mets. It's all the NL East. And then the Orioles are actually higher than the Marlins, which I guess would make sense given the Marlins haven't done much. So they're kind of the lesser. And now we can segue to the Phillies, and yep, as expected, the Mets are number one, and then the Braves, and then the Nationals. I mean, in a way, I could kind of see the Braves being higher, but at the same time, they usually beat the Braves whenever they play each other in the postseason. And then obviously, with the Mets, it's the New York Philly thing. I wonder if there are any teams that have distaste for them, and it doesn't seem like there are any other than the NL East. Now we can make our way over to the AL Central, since we're kind of going geographically. We are very obviously shown that the Tigers are their biggest rival, the Yankees are their second most hated team, and then it's the White Sox. They do have enough animosity towards the Twins for it to be considered a rivalry though, and same goes the reverse. And that's why this one's higher, because the Yankees don't really have much on the Guardians. And then yeah, this is one of the bigger rivalries. It's not like as known or massive as the iconic ones, but it still is a pretty big rivalry. They have high higher animosity towards the Reds than the Royals. I mean, the Royals don't really do much regularly. 
Speaking of the Royals, here we are, and wow. So the geographic interleague rivalry is bigger than any AL Central rivalry. I guess I can see that, given how they haven't really had battles with AL Central teams as much, and whenever they're contenders, they pretty much run away with it. Cardinals don't really feel the same, but I guess that's to be expected. It seems like the Tigers are the only fan base that has a problem with the Royals. Any Royal fan can enlighten me on if this is accurate. Number one, no question. And then the Sox. And then the Twins. This is actually supposedly one of the oldest rivalries in baseball. Otherwise, it's pretty much all AL Central teams. And the White Sox are the biggest one. Technically, Minnesota has an issue with Chicago. This is towers above all other rivalries. And so the Guardians and Twins did have a little battle for the division. I think for a lot of Twins fans, the Yankees are their least favorite team. The Tigers have enough animosity for them to be considered rivals both ways. And the Royals, it's just whatever. Neither team particularly care for each other because it's the AL Central, but not as big as the other ones. And now we're finishing off the AL Central with the South Side. So the Twins barely beat out the Cubs. That's interesting. I wonder if White Sox fans would agree with that, to be honest, because as far as like interleague, crosstown, geographic rivalries go, White Sox and Cubs seems to be like the most mutual. It's definitely more mutual than ours in the Bay Area. <laughs> Tigers, they have a bigger problem with the Sox than the other way around, but they both still have problems with each other. And then this is pretty much even between them and the Guardians, and the Royals have a bigger problem with them than the other way around. So are the White Sox the most hated team in the AL Central. NL Central time. So the Cubs are higher than the Cardinals this time. But it used to be the other way around. And it appears like they don't really have a third rival. Seems to be more one-sided between the Brewers and Cubs, but the Cubs still have enough animosity for it to be considered a rivalry. Cardinals don't have as big of a problem with the Brewers. I guess because it's mostly the teams they play in the postseason. And the Cardinals, who would have saw that coming? One of the biggest rivalries in baseball. And yeah, look at that. Now we have more rivals outside of the division. Honestly, given the success of the Cardinals, it makes sense that non-NL Central fans wouldn't really care for them that much. Although to be fair, one of those non-NL Central fan bases is the fan base that plays right next to them. And the Reds have a bigger problem with the Cardinals and the Brewers. I guess they did have some good competition in like the early 2010s, so I can see that. And then, yeah, definitely Pirates fans. And then, of course, the Astros. They used to have a really good rivalry when the Astros were in the NL Central. And now we got the Cubs, and again, who would have seen this coming? This actually makes pretty much sense. Cardinals, Sox, and Brewers. Those are like the three biggest rivals I would think of for the Cubs. But obviously the Cardinals are the overwhelming one since that's one of the major iconic rivalries in Major League Baseball. And since the Brewers have more animosity towards the Cubs than the Sox do, apparently, that's a bigger rivalry. But the Reds also can't stand the Cubs, and the Pirates also can't stand the Cubs, as expected. Yeah, look at that, Pirates Reds. Because they didn't actually have data on them when I looked at this five years ago, or at least when I did the video five years ago. This is actually one of the more underrated rivalries to me. It doesn't have the same luster like it did in the 70s, obviously, but it still is one of the more underrated, overlooked rivalries. It also doesn't help that they are one of only three teams to not win an LCS game since the early 90s. They're both two of three teams, I should say. And then the Brewers, but Seems like Cardinals and Cubs fans don't think of Pirates as rivals as much. So the Cardinals, and then the Cubs, and then the Pirates. And not as heated, apparently, the Battle of Ohio. Yeah, I'd say this seems about right. Well, I'm not a Reds fan, so Reds fans can tell me if this is accurate. So now we're getting closer to the big ones, but we're starting with the AL West. And so the Dodgers are number one, could see that coming. And then we are second. That honestly is not surprising. This is one of the more underrated rivalries too. The biggest hindrance is that there wasn't a playoff series between these two, even though there could have been twice. And I think what's interesting about this is that I actually kind of would have expected the Rangers to be higher than us, to be honest. And it looks like the Mariners have a bigger rivalry since there's more animosity from Mariners fans to the Angels than there is from Dodger fans to the Angels. 
And now we get the other team that nobody likes, and has the biggest rival with their in-state rivals. And of course, Dallas and Houston also have a rivalry in basketball. And based on these numbers, this should be one of the biggest rivalries in baseball. However, we've only gotten one playoff series between the two, and the Rangers generally pretty much own the Astros. And then we are second. There's more animosity from us than it is from them. If we hadn't blown out the core, then maybe this would be a little bit higher. Man, that would have been such a great rivalry. They have a bigger problem with the Dodgers and vice versa. This is higher than the Cardinals too, by the way. Since we're talking so much about my favorite team, and the Astros are actually higher than the Angels. It used to actually still be the Angels higher than the Astros not too long ago. And the Giants, I mean, it's fun whenever it's a matchup. It's not as big as the Giants fans that don't really have a problem with us. And funnily enough, Ranger fans have a bigger problem with us than we do them. And this is definitely expected for Mariners fans, which is why I'm not crazy about their success. I would definitely rather see them win five World Series titles than to see the Rangers or the Astros or the Angels win another one. And so the Mariners don't really have anybody rooting against them. I'm kind of surprised that we aren't a little bit higher because it seems like Mariners fans have a bigger problem with us. Well, actually, I don't know. I've, I haven't seen that big of a sample size. And so the Rangers right after the Astros, the Yankees right after the Rangers. Wow, so all AL West teams are higher. I guess because they didn't make the playoffs for a very long time, they had to take their anger out on the rest of us. As expected, the Astros are number one, then it's the Angels, and then it's us. I feel like if we were more involved in division races like we were in 2012 and 2013, this would be a bigger rivalry. And so the Blue Jays as well, given the battles they had. And on that note, we can go to the final set of teams. And yep, as expected, the Dodgers are their least favorite team. I'm actually kind of surprised that the Dodgers don't have as much. I mean, it makes sense that it's one-sided, but I didn't think it would be this one-sided. Rockies, Diamondbacks, that makes sense. It's bigger than Giants, Diamondbacks. No question about it, because this is one of the biggest rivalries, not only in baseball, but in sports. They have a bigger problem with the Cardinals and the Astros, as opposed to the Padres as well. So technically, Diamondbacks and Dodgers is a bigger rivalry than Padres and Dodgers. Interesting. No questions about this one. It feels like there's a little bit more rivalry points towards us than there was last time. Having grown up around Giants fans, the only other team I could see them having a problem with is like the Mets. I mean, nothing compares to the Dodgers for them. <laughs> the Rockies have a bigger problem with the Giants than we do. So apparently I forgot to do the Padres. I kind of thought it would be a little bit more even between these two, but the Dodgers being number one and then the Giants makes perfect sense. The Rockies almost have enough reverse rivalry points for them to be considered a rival of the Padres, but Padres fans don't really have as much animosity towards them. The Diamondbacks aren't on this list and Padres haven't really done much consistently and Dodger fans fans seem to have more of a problem with the Padres and Giants fans, which to be expected. And the last team, and ah, the only NL West fan base to have a bigger problem with the Giants and the Dodgers. It's to be expected that these two are ahead and the Diamondbacks are like right behind. They don't have as much of a problem with the Padres. They kind of do, but they don't. Definitely not compared to the other three teams. I wonder what Rocky fans would have to say about this. And so if you want to see how this data compares to the data of five years ago, you can check out this video right here. And I'll see you in the next one. Make sure you subscribe. We're on the road to 1K.